Right, welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Straight from the bat, you might be wondering where my last episode is. CBS, and this ties in with this, CBS knows that the show is shite. Um, I have never had any of my reviews blocked. I stayed up until half two last night, so half two in the morning, this morning, um, with just persistent blocked worldwide, blocked worldwide, constant blocked worldwide on my review. Uh, of the last episode which has never happened before absolutely ever um, and it's really telling when a studio does that so interesting I've, they, there's quite literally been about 25 edits that i've done and i'm still doing it i'm literally doing it right now uh, in between uploading this so if you see this and it's not there or it is there then hey you kind of know what i've been talking about but like i said it goes hand in hand with this this article you can find over on bounding into comics.com um, and originally it was over on Variety, so we'll take a look at both and kind of get to grips with it all. But look, Star Trek Picard showrunner Michael Chabon. Sounds like a, I don't know, like an 80s R&B singer. Chabon. Uh, admits that he wanted to piss off or provoke people. Not really the way to go. Um, which, look, right between the lines, has played some devil's advocate here. Maybe he's just saying he wants to subvert expectations, but it's not the way forward. Um, not like this, anyway. FYI, that last episode was horrendous. It was... What a total waste of time. Hence why I really want to get this review up. Because they they deserve a slamming. Um, yeah. They, they need to be pounded worse than a corner sharp hoe. Uh, so, showrunner Michael Chabon admitted that he wanted to piss off or provoke people with his first season of Star Trek Picard. Now, one of the things I find truly baffling about this man... Is he just we just won't shut up. But he's not on the second season. So what are you doing, mate? Just shut up. You are putting people off anything you make in future. You know that, right? Literally anything you make in future is now gonna be under sheer scrutiny from day dot. Why? Because you won't you just won't stop running your mouth. Um, and it's it's tragic really. Now these comments and more came in a lengthy discussion the showrunner had with Variety to promote the final episode of Star Trek Picard. Not only does he keep doing these interviews, he also keeps doing Q&As. Very, just stop it. Stop it, boy. Now, Variety's Adam Vary went right for the $1 million question and asked Shabon, so were there things about Picard that you knew you wanted to do that you could sense would test some boundaries for fans? Now, that's an interesting question because it would seem as well, and I don't know whether like a lot of people are admitting this or not, but it would seem that a lot of the media uh when they're reviewing this they know it's trash there's so many reviews just going what the hell is this tripe it's garbage so anyway shabon answered it said sure to the extent that i was aware of the kind of toxic fandom the anti-sjw you know sad little corner of fandom you just disregard that now one of the things i, f I truly find fascinating about this is that actually to say that the fans that don't like your Picard uh, are toxic and they're just anti-SJW is total nonsense. Because actually, what these people are, try are, are crying out for is an apolitical look at the world, which was actually very much in the vein of social justice. You know, the whole setup of the original Star Trek, right? And I've said this many, many times um, and, and initially I said, well, you know, I'm just speaking for myself here. But a lot of people have agreed with me. The original setup of Star Trek was, let's take a step back from humanity. Let's look at the world with an unbiased, apolitical view. Let's look at every key factor that has, you know, affected our civilization. And let's present it like a utopia, learning from their mistakes, i.e., I guess, like true social justice, right? You've reached this utopia and educating the other alien races, but from an apolitical stance. There was never in this show, did never in Star Trek, the original Star Trek, did they take an actual political stance on anything. They didn't. They, they were merely apolitical voices with a utopia to back up the, 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 the non-biased political view. Now in this, unfortunately, we have stances of Brexit, we've got commentary against Trump, commentary against stem cell research, uh, or pro-stem cell research. All manner of things are in this show. Um, and you're presenting it like it's only toxic fans, which, again, 
really, really does show that you simply don't understand Star Trek. There you go, you know? Just to say that it's... And it's this real flippant view of... We'll just we'll just backhand every 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 critique away as oh it's just toxic fans. Don't worry, keep smelling your farts, Mr. Shabon, because that's what you do. You're quite literally that meme from South Park of people sniffing their own farts. That's what you are. That's what you've become. It's laughable. It is truly laughable. But it's also quite tragic because you're currently or you were in charge of Star Trek, so we kind of have to listen to your tripe, don't we? And he just says, well, you disregard that. But unfortunately, that's the majority of the Star Trek fan base. And they're not anti-SJW. In fact, they're, they're pretty much very pro, you know, utopia. They want to look at the world with a very earnest and sincere approach. There's something nice about that. There's something lovely, you know. People are like, it's this kind of commentary here of it's just toxic fans, which is actually insanely negative. Whereas a lot of the fans that uh, don't like this show don't like it because it's incredibly negative. Which is quite hilarious when you take a look at that for when you really simplify it down. The people that don't like it don't like it because it's incredibly negative. It's dark. It's dour. There's no light. There's no levity. There's no positivity. Right? In fact, the Romulans were right. Throughout the whole fucking show, they were right. But you're going to claim that those people that are critiquing it are simply just toxic and negative and anti this and anti that. Well, that's hilarious. The only ones which are incredibly negative about anything were the people writing the show. Incredibly negative about Brexit, incredibly negative about Trump, the economy, anti this, them so blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. You're the negative ones projecting it out there. So don't be surprised when people don't like it. You know? Unreal. He then added that sometimes you're motivated to have things simply because it's possibly uh, possibly going to piss off or provoke people who seem to have missed the memo about just what exactly Star Trek is and always has been about. If you think it's about this, again, it shows a fundamental lack of understanding that you have of what Star Trek is and has always been about. Shabon then specified, pointing out that the deaths of Icheb and Hugh. In the course of this season, we show the death of Icheb, who was a recurring character on Voyager, and then the death of Hugh, who was a recurring character on TNG. When we talked about it, we definitely had a sense of like, there's probably going to be some people who are upset that these characters have died. Okay, but how does that best serve and best represent what Star Trek is about? A show created to depict a utopia. It's like the clock ticking sound, isn't it? Like, where's the answer, mate? He justifies Ishab, Ishab saying, The death of Ishab has now become part of the story of Seven of Nine. It felt completely called for, and we couldn't have told her story without it. Yes, you could. Y you absolutely could have. I mean, the death of Ishab is upsetting partly because it's fairly gruesome, which I understand, but also because, you know, he's so powerless, he has no agency, he's really a victim. But the story, narratively speaking, Seven of Nine didn't really go on any arc at all, right? She's the leader of the Fenris Rangers, right? Um, then she gets betrayed by her lesbian lover, Vajazzle, or whatever the fucking goddamn her name is, uh, who kills Icheb, right? To which then... Seven of Nine murders Vajazzle and then ditches the Fenris Rangers completely. Just ditches them. Ditches them. Rando becomes a Borg Queen for all of like five minutes. Goes nowhere. Then again ditches the Fenris Rangers. The people she was a leader of to then go with Picard. What story arc is there? Story arc of her ditching people? Because that's all that's there. I mean, what? Uh, he then justified that de um, he then justified Hugh's death, but that isn't the case with the death of Hugh. He dies trying to do what he's been doing, what he's been trying to do his entire adult life, which is help former Borg. His death felt meaningful. He died like a bitch. There was nothing mean meaningful about his death at all. I will say, I don't think I quite understood understood that there were going to be people who would be upset about a character's death regardless of how that character died. That simply the fact of a character dying that was not okay with them. 
even if I had known that I would have ultimately dismissed it because it seems I just don't understand television in that way. So stop making television shows, please. Seriously. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's some other comments here. Look, Shabon begins by saying that he probably should ignore fan reactions to the show like a number of his Picard partners. I mean, one possible reaction response that I could have had, and I think some of the partners on Picard do have, is to ignore it all completely, or to just take a little glance, maybe look at Rotten Tomatoes, see what the kind of consensus of the reviews from the critics has been, which has been pretty darn favourable, and just sort of leave it at that. Alright, sit in your bubble, don't worry about it. He then reveals he pursues... I, I made like a microfilm the other day, right? I made a microfilm, and I said I, I genuinely want some critique. And there was some really good critique that came out. You know, a lot of people were saying you should have framed it a bit differently here. Maybe gone up, maybe some shots of your hands. Um, some of it I, I can disregard because they didn't... Some of the comments which were coming back didn't understand the intention behind the shot itself. Um, in, in terms of like what I was trying to tell narratively. So when people were saying we well, should have done something in the daytime or something like this and something like that, it's like, well, mm, that actually wouldn't have served the purpose behind it. But a lot of it, I actually took on board. A lot of it was really good, you know, and it's things which I want to take forward, um, you know, or, or, on my way. Like, in, again, just subtle things about framing. Have it a little bit more shoulder height. Zoom in on the hands, you know, sync it up. Make, I, you know, make it obvious whether it's uh, diegetic audio or, um, do you know what I mean? Like, it's all this kind of stuff. Those, that's good feedback. You know, but this guy is just like, just have a little bit of look at Rotten Tomatoes, fuck it off. All right, then. He then reveals he pursues Reddit and Twitter. I've, I've got Twitter. Good. Blue check marks. I've gone maybe half a dozen uh, times since the season started to look on Reddit. I will say the quality of comments and of criticism on Reddit is so much vastly higher than it is on Twitter. Even some quite strongly neg negative criticism. It tends to be much better reasoned, much better supported with evidence in a way that I can respect and engage with and listen to. We, I don't see you engaging with any of these videos. You have a YouTube channel, my boy. You know? But again, you seem seemingly contradicting yourself when you just say, well, it's just anti-SJWs. It's not. It's really not. It's been pretty exciting. I think inevitably I spent a fair amount of time looking around on Twitter and Reddit, you know, trying to get a sense of people's responses. Twitter is kind of a horrible place too, so I wasn't really encouraged to spend too much time looking at it. That's hilarious that you're saying it's all anti-SJWs. The amount of SJWs that reside on Twitter is majority SJWs, so that's quite comical, isn't it? Anyway, and then he made some other comments there. I actually went back and looked on Google Groups, which uh, acquired Usenet. So you can look through the old Usenet groups and watch what people said about Deep Space Nine and then about Voyager. They effing hated it. Um, they lacerated it. I mean, plenty of people liked it and loved it. Whatever. You're just trying to justify it by labelling it against other things and, you know, comparing your show to Westworld and Breaking Bad and all this other kind of crap. It's terrible. Your show's bad. Hopefully it won't get a second season. It's really not very good. It went utterly nowhere. Um... It's a bad show. So anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this. Let me know down below in the comment section. Just a word. Um, I hope you're all doing really, really well. This is a, is a weird time to be around, isn't it? Um, I'm still pushing on. There was no videos yesterday because I tried to get this review out, but it never got out. So, hey, that sucks. Um, a few videos dropping today. I have an update on my short film. If you don't know what that is, well, stick around for the update. That will be released shortly. And also check out the link down below in the description box to... Well, to support the short film. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Drop your thoughts down below. Give this video a like and a share. Tells YouTube you want to be notified of my content because otherwise, they're bitches. But thanks so much. I've been Mr. H. Take care.